Welcome to Volume 1 Test Interaction, the ultimate tutorial for creating stunning pyro simulations. In this lesson, we'll start by creating pyro source and learn how to apply useful technique to create test and smoke simulations. We will understand voxel workflow and create sparse pyro solver from scratch. Along the way, we will learn how to apply micro solvers and control their value. And we will study velocity as well and explore other smaller tips and tricks to enhance your simulation and find the perfect voxel size for your scene. We will even learn how to create moving object smoke simulation in PyroSolver shop. Once we get decent sim result, we will input our result into Silaris and render it using Karma XPU. And we will check out Material X and learn how to render it faster. So check out this exciting new course where we will explore the art of creating stunning dust simulations from basics to advanced techniques. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> So let's talk about learning approach. So how to learn Houdini. So in initial stage, focus on basic. What I mean by basic, node workflow, designing source, go one by one. In this tutorial, you will find some advanced technique and complex technique as well, which is a bit difficult to understand. So if it's too difficult, then you can just take a screenshot of it. Just remember that where to apply it and don't try to remember the wax and everything. You can just easily take a screenshot and save and always keep a library of smaller, smaller things. And as this is volume one, so I will cover few useful parameters to create this cool dust simulation. Right. So one more last technique before starting this. Houdini is very vast. Some things is quite complex and some things is very easy to understand, you know. So try to master it in easiest things. You can just level up over the time. So let's start with setup next. So let's start by saving this file. And if I go to this file, I have an options create new projects. So what it will do, it will create these folders and everything. So in my case, I don't want all these folders, right? So I'll just save this file directly. And here I'll just go and on desktop, I'll create this master folder. And let me set file name. We have to keep it short. Volume one, this interaction version one. Save this. And if I go over here that I have some dollar heap, dollar job and dollar temp as well. So what are these? So these are variables. We will learn more about this later. And this is viewport and these are the network view and here the parameter. And this looks cool, but if I create anything, how do I understand scale of the scene, right? So for that, I prefer using this test geometry and there are a bunch of test geometry and use this Tommy. So this is actual human scale and Houdini works in meters and if I just check this, middle click this, 1.78 meters. We have to imagine us standing there, right? And we can just compare things over here. And I want animated geometry as well. And for that, I will use this crack. So, which is walking around over here, right? And this angle looks cool. To create camera, I can just go over here and I can just click over here. It will create this camera. And I don't want rotation in this axis. Yep, this looks cool. And I want 120 frames only. Cool, so let's just set this for scale. And give it some cool color. And also do set hotkeys and, and I have provided link for that. Next, let's learn about voxels. So basically, voxels define quality of volume pyro. And for image, it is pixel. So here I have this simple example to just check. And if I increase these pixels, you can see here this image is getting more clear. Right. 
right so this is mark layer now and let me just use 300 yep this looks good so here pixel defined the quality of image so similar voxel defined the quality of pyro volume but main point here we need to understand how to define voxel pixel over here right so this depends on distance as well and if i just reduce this pixel and if i check this if it was in this distance it's totally fine we don't really need that 300 pixels and here we can even optimize this and there is too much distance like this and totally fine right and if i go more closer over here and i need to increase this so why i'm talking about this distance the same concept applies in voxel as well so this was the example of pixels and let's just check out voxels as well so voxel is also like 3d basically and you can see here this is voxel size and if i reduce this and don't worry i will talk about this in some time but for now let's just visualize this if i reduce this you can see here that we are getting proper shapes over here void zero let's use 0.1 Right, so if I reduce this more, the more cube it will add and it will define more clear shape. And let me just reduce this. Yep, this looks awesome and proper shape it's taking, right? Check out this, we have clean edge, right? So, but if I increase this, you can see here that we have some voxels. Along the way, we will learn how to choose correct voxel size. We won't waste any voxel and based on distance only, we will figure out how to choose correct voxel, right? So these are the similarities in pixel and voxel, right? And now let's understand this in more depth. If I immediately go here that I have this point, primitive and pack geometry, right? So I don't want this hammer. So let me as it's packed so i will just unpack it right so it's unpacked so i have proper numbers of primitive vertices and polygons so this is geometry and how do i convert this into a volume so for that we have these two options so one is hoodness default volumes you can see here it's not clearly visible so let me press d and for while working with volumes, I prefer using dark background. And I will keep this as a default only. So save as default, it will be saved. And now you can see here, it's clearly visible, right? So as I have mentioned, this is Houdini's default volume. So if I made it leak that, I can see some voxels, voxel size and its volume. The name is not defined yet, but here I can just type this name. For volumes, we will work on this density. And now if I middle click that I have this name. And how do I increase the quality of this volume? So for that, I have to increase this. And yep, let me increase this 100. And let me use 200. As you can see, it's taking time and we don't have very clean volume as well so the good thing is we have other options as well so as this was hoodness default so other option is vdb so here if i go that i have their option vdb from particles vdb from polygons as these are polygons so we will use vdb from polygons and let me ch check this connect this so it gives two options distance vdb and fog vdb so this distance VDB, we will talk about this later, but for information, we will use this for collision. And here I'm interested using in fog VDB. And let me just reduce these voxels. You can see here, this is really quick and we have more better over here. So as you can see, VDB is more faster, right? So for source, we will use VDB only. And next we will talk about pyrosource. Let's understand Pyrosource workflow. Let's take a box and it's a polygon. So here we have Pyrosource node. So what it will do, it will scatter some points and it will create density attributes. It can be anything. It can be a temperature, fuel, burn. And this is not the only way of doing this. We can even use points from volume to scatter points and we can use point triangle to add attribute. And till here, they are just points. 
and we have to convert this into density so for that we have one more node volume rasterize attributes basically it will convert points into volume in previous video we have used vdp from polygons so that was quick way of generating any volumes and here we are scattering particles creating attribute after that we are rasterizing the reason of doing this with points we have more control in some cases vdp from polygon can be worked but in most cases this is more procedural approach so end goal is creating a volume it can be any approach to do that right so now let's create this cool let's delete this and here we will use simple geometry like box for testing purpose and let me use pyro source over here if i connect this it will show some points and these are the cube points here if i increase this and you can see here it's a point of cube because we have this keep input points mode on over here and i have other options as well like i can use surface scatter so it will just scatter on the surface only but i want to scatter inside as well so for that i will use volume scatter and next i have particle separation it will scatter particles based on distance so if i reduce this we will have lesser distance and more particles and after that we have particle scale as well so if i go over here middle click and you can see here we have p scale and how to visualize this for that let me reset this and to visualize this i can use copy to points and here i can use box to copy this on each point So I can see here it's properly distributed and this is the scale so if I reduce this till 1 right so it looks like box but it's not and if I reduce it by 0 0.9 you can see here distributed equally and if I reduce this particle separation you can see here this is cool right and now if I visualize this I have other options as well so I can just click on this plus icon and I can add attribute over here so here I will use density attribute and I have this value as well and let's visualize this value so I can just go over here to the spreadsheet I can just see density p scale so let me increase this so these are both linked to each other and let me keep this default so now it's time to convert this into a volume for that we will use volume rasterize attribute if i connect these i have some parameters over here and i have to just select that attribute so if i go over here i can just select this density attribute here the most useful parameter is voxel size and we will talk about this so what is voxel size over here if I reduce this, it will increase the quality of voxels. And now you can see here. And if I reduce this by 0.5, volume rasterize is copy stamping this each boxes on points. And that's what it's doing. Let me just make this default. So that's how it's generating this volume. But the main question over here is how do I figure out which voxel size I should choose for this one, right? So if I just view from camera, then I can see it's really in distance. And is this voxel size enough for this one? To figure that out, here we can see that this, this is the basically a voxel size as well. Now if I visualize this, I can see this is the voxel size if we keep this one over here. And if I reduce this, you can see here, we can just understand this as a pixel is this pixel enough no it won't so we have to reduce this more right so you can see it's really tiny over here and this is still not enough we can just even reduce this even more for this distance right but if i reduce this to 001 then this is really high so in most cases 005 is fine for this distance but as you can see here that every time we cannot just place this box over there and visualize this right and what if this box is in that direction so let me just oops 
let me just move these in that direction right so if it's in really distance then how we can just visualize that so for that we can just calculate center of this point and i can just copy stamp there and here we can use pack geometry if i connect this i will get one single point and i can just visualize this as well right if i use copy two points over here it will just place there and now if i reduce this to point one right now it's really easy if i place this anywhere it will just follow that so for this distance this tiny point is fine and you will understand this more when we actually simulate this for now let's just reset this and reset this as well and next we will talk about top network before exploring DOP network, I wanted to mention that around 80% of the audience watching are not subscribed. In our industry, we have a limited audience and your support means a lot. If my tutorials are helping you, please consider subscribing. It's free for you, but it will motivate me immensely to create more content for you. Additionally, if you'd like to support me further, check out my Houdini files and tutorials through the link in the description. These setups are well optimized and easily modifiable to meet your requirements. Thank you for your support. Now let's continue the tutorial. Cool, let's organize this one. Let's rename this. Do remember it's generating VDBs, so this is faster. And now let's add DOP network. And we can rename this here as well. And at object level also we will rename this. So here we are creating source and dot network inside one node only. So now let's double click over here. So we have nothing over here. First we need brain, so which is solver. So let's type sparse. So basically it's a pyro solver and it's sparse. And let's just check inputs over here. So it has objects, advection, sourcing and forces, right? So we need object to run this and let me again type this sparse so i have that smoke object sparse All right, let me connect this so it's showing some domain over here right and let me just rename this as a dust cool let's just run this so it's showing nothing and it's playing real fast let me just turn on real time and this system is ready to simulate anything right and here we need to import source and for that we will just copy this path and I will use volume source and copy this over here and I can just paste this swap path. Now let's run this. It still won't play anything and here we need to just call this density field inside that source. So let's just check how we can do that. So here if I select this and I can scroll down I have that operations option and if I click this and I can just mention source volume and field rank is scalar and we have two options vector is for velocity which we will talk later and source volume is density and target field is also density and now if I play this it's playing over here so Sparse solver understand this density field, right? So if I click over here, it will just take that into the system, right? But if I use density X, it will still run something, right? So as you can see, but it won't visualize or it won't add back or something, right? So it knows flame and temperature and density. And now let's just check out some parameters. So these are swap mask, dop mask, so which is to multiply some field and after that we have source scale which is I can just reduce this so there are a bunch of operations so this is more like mathematics and if you want to add or you, you want to keep it same subtract and anything for density I want to add density so if we are adding one and on next frame it will add one more so in total it will be two but if I keep copy it will be the same 
it won't add in the system so here i will just reset this i want to add and if i select the smoke object so i have most useful parameter is voxel size and now it's time to link this so let me just copy parameter and paste over here so i will use paste relative references so the advantage of this i can just change this over here as well it will reflect over here so point one is fine and second thing i will use this same parameter to link here as well particle separation and i want to use half of this so let me just divide this with particle scale copy and paste over here i will have enough particles when i reduce voxel size cool and now if i select pyro solver i have time scale and other parameters so some parameters i won't touch as it's meant for fire explosions and everything right so here i'm interested in using is shape and here is dissipation it will control the dissipation of dust and disturbance so how this works basically as you can see if i play this it's static and if i middle click it has this active and density only so it's showing two field only but if i introduce this disturbance now if i reset this simulation i will have more which is pressure and velocity and let me talk about velocity only so density cannot move on its own right so it needs some position shift with the help of velocity it will move around so here we need to understand this velocity as extra force and that velocity will be added in the position of the density right that's how it will change position and here if i turn on this it will enable some parameters here as well and now let me just increase this to visualize this yep there is some moment cool this is interesting and this is basics of pyro solvers how to build this to make it work we just need these three nodes pyro solver smoke object volume source we will work more on this next let's select this and if i scroll down i have some field over here and this is density and second one is velocity and if i disable this it's not showing any velocity over here right and if i turn this on then only it's working on that and here also we have to mention this block size and if i go over here that you can just check let me increase this so block size is one so if i keep this one over here then you can see here it's taking the shape of that this is called micro solvers and we will talk about more later but for now we need to import this outside as well to import this we can use top import fields and i can just select this click and drag and here i need to select the default object which is dust let me just import and its density it won't load anything right so object is already we have mentioned over here so we need we can just keep this blank and now if i play it will load something and if i press and let me just change this so you can see it's showing over here why i have imported outside if i add light so let me just click distance and i want to change the angle of light so for that i can just go over here look through the light and let me just check camera is over here and this will be the best view for that yep so as you can see it's low res and at the moment let me just link this over here let me just paste this i don't want to link this okay so the current actually is this much and let me just reduce it by point this is still not enough but 
we can for testing we can use this so let's use 0 0.25 and now let me run this if I reset this yep we have good resolution over here this is without light and this is with light so outside we can see impact of light but if i go inside so those light won't be useful over here let me just disable this velocity so for better visualization it's better to visualize this outside over here and now we can work on source as well let me add grid over here Yep, so it's co covering that area. Here, I want this intersection point. If I typed intersection, I have intersection analysis. So if I connect this, it will give me that intersection without changing any parameter. And I prefer turning this on so it will give me proper curve as well. And for safer side, if some point doesn't intersect properly, so just for source, I can just use minus, minus 0 0.1. So I can just shift a bit. So it's taking time to load, right? So here I can use file cache. And I can save this. So remember I was talking about this dollar heap. So it's a variable. And if I go to this edit, elicits and variable, if I type this dollar heap, it will read some path. But which path? To visualize that, I can just go over here. And heap will read this, that master folder I have created. So if I cache everything over here and I copy paste this folder anywhere in the drive, it will auto sync this path and it will auto construct this folder and everything. But I don't really want this. So I will just create this cache and I will use $OS. So that's the name of this node. I can just middle click and check. So here I will just use intersection v1. So if I want to just version up later, I can do that. Let me load this and save to disk. Cool, it's showing. Now I will just connect this over here. Will this work? Let's just check that out. It's not working because we don't have volume to scatter. And I want to have some mesh over, around this. And for that, I can use poly wire. So it will create radius around it. And it's too high. Let me reduce. Let me reduce this more. It's too thin. So I can just increase this by 25. Yep, this is fine. And let me just merge. Slice this. Do I need to increase? Yep, this was fine. It shouldn't be visible. And as you can see, I can see some hard cut. And for that, I can just increase these. Yep, this is good enough. Now, if I connect this and check, yep, this is working. and this is also working cool let's visualize the first simulation connect this go over here and run this let's make a first flipbook of this lesson
Yep, that interaction is working and we will enhance this more next. Thank mm -hmm. you.